The national debt in the United States is steadily increasing year after year, finally reaching historic levels. The situation is concerning to say the least, with a fast-paced growth at a rate of staggering $1 trillion accruing to the national debt every 100 days. The recent total in January of this year was a record-breaking $34 trillion. We're almost at $35 trillion. And maybe by the time you're watching this video, yes, we'll be at $35, maybe $36 trillion. In previous years, there was a general sense of complacency regarding the national debt. Not anymore. It's true that the United States has held debt since its inception, but it's no longer feasible to bury our heads in the sand over this unsustainable trajectory. Many economists warn that this mounting debt could throttle down important social programs, raise the probability of financial crises. What's going on with this immense amount of debt? How did we get here? So on today's show, we're going to talk about some of the main factors brewing right now behind the scenes. This massive amount of looming debt proves a serious lack of financial responsibility within the U.S. government, including skyrocketing spending habits that will have serious lasting effects for the American people for decades to come. This number, let me repeat it for you, $34 trillion. It encompasses decades worth of debt for the country. This includes war, programs like food stamps, education, funding national parks. And outside of that, one of the main factors that has contributed to this massive amount of debt, and especially the rate at which it has grown, is its pandemic-related spending. Gobs of money were thrown at, at the problem from vaccine development. How'd that work out for us, by the way? To grants and subsidies, getting these, you know, these biopharmaceutical companies totally off the hook, economic impact payments, funding for healthcare, and so on. You can see how this easily and quickly can add it up for the American people. Another issue that has amassed tons of debt in recent years is immigration support. That's right, the U.S. government is spending taxpayer money on housing, food, transportation for illegal immigrants. They enter the country illegally, just as we've seen. They come to New York City and they're given free flights. Where do you want to travel in the United States? Sure, American taxpayers will foot the bill. Want to go to Chicago? Want to go to Seattle? We'll pay for it. Imagine if you just showed up in New York City and said, um, yeah, I'm a family of five. I'd like to travel to uh, Chicago. Can I book a flight? No, sorry, you're American. You'll have to pay for your flight. So if you haven't seen my video on what's going on with illegal immigration in this country, you've got to watch that video next where we'll have some more context on it. We'll link it for you right here. We'll have a little card that'll pop up. Watch that video. And of course, we can't forget the billions of dollars we have gone to fund the war in Ukraine. While sending aid to foreign countries isn't anything new for the United States, the amount sent to Ukraine far exceeds any other recipient. The Biden administration and the U.S. Congress have allocated another $60 billion for fighting the conflict in Ukraine. It was unbelievable over the past weekend to watch the U.S. House of Representatives waving Ukrainian flags on the floor of Congress. It's jaw-dropping. This is the United States. Your border is wide open. People are sleeping in tent cities across the United States, and we're sending $60 billion to Ukraine and then waving Ukrainian flags on the floor of Congress? What world do I live in? All of that being said, the U.S. government is on track to spend more on interest payments in the next 10 years than it's expected to spend on national defense. And we spend a lot on national defense, almost a trillion dollars a year. That goes to show you how out of whack these national debt numbers are. We're just on the interest payments alone on the debt is now more than we spend on Social Security, is more than we spend on our U.S. military. What are the implications of this debt load? Well, the amount of debt is just a ticking time bomb. It threatens any remaining security and resiliency of the U.S. economy. It gives the country less flexibility to respond to unexpected problems. It removes all safety nets. It slows economic growth. And it places the burden on our future generations. And I look at my seven-year-old daughter and I think, you don't know what's in store for you right now. The amount of debt you will have in the United States when you're my age. The attitude that the United States of America is too big to fail could be our biggest downfall. And it seems obvious that this is an issue that needs to be addressed. There are three out of four voters agree that the national debt should be at the forefront of policymaking. There are two main options that could make an impact. Reduce spending or increase revenue, right? Bring in more money and maybe even reduce spending simultaneously. The best way for the U.S. government to increase the revenue is to charge Americans more in taxes. What do you think that our lawmakers will choose? Spend less or tax you more? I definitely think that they're not going to take any pay cuts anytime soon. Heck, we just funded a brand new FBI building. And we're hiring more IRS agents. 
This is the American priority right now. Politicians cannot agree on a way to tackle this mountain of debt. Plus, both parties are unlikely to cut funding to programs or hike up taxes. Because at the end of the day, they're all looking to get elected. It's futile to point fingers, as both parties have ultimately contributed to this issue. Both parties should take responsibility for finding solutions. It's a uniparty. They're both corrupt, and they're both responsible. As for the American people, I always say, look, if you want to stay afloat in today's economy, you'll have to learn how to protect yourself and your wealth from external factors, from the government. It's more important than ever to think about ways to reduce your overall tax burden and begin by building generational wealth for your family. The best way to do this, in my opinion, includes buying real estate. Rental properties are inflation-proof assets that always provide income. And best of all, investing in real estate offers many great tax benefits. This is going to protect you if your elected officials decide to ramp up taxes in order to increase the country's income. If you're interested in what we do at my company at Morris Invest, you can click on the link in the description box to schedule a free call with our team, and we can help you decide if rental real estate is a good fit for you. Additionally, investing in gold and silver will always be a solid strategy. It has been that way for thousands of years. It's a safe, tangible asset that is resistant to inflation and market volatility. National debt is a serious problem in the United States, and the state of consumer debt isn't any better. In this next video, you're going to be learning all about consumer credit card debt and the major factors that influence it. So I want you to check out that next video right here, and we'll see you next time, everyone.